Hi, I'm Tom Waite from GunDogTrainer.com and today we're going to talk about wool breaking and the proper way of doing it with the electronic collar. As you saw in our other videos earlier in the series, we use the electronic collar on the neck and collar condition of the dog for basic obedience commands. Today we're going to show you with the pointing dogs how we teach the wool command with proper use of electronics. This is Bailey, she's a six month old Gordon Setter. Gordon Setters by nature are typically a little softer and can be a little harder to deal with. So this is a dog that I can't afford to have an issue in training with early on by using a technique that she's not going to move ahead with. When putting the collar on the dog's belly, which is what we're going to do, we take the collar, we make sure it's on obviously. Come here Bailey. We put it around her waist between her rib cage and her hips. We administer it this way and then we make sure that it's snug when we put it on. We don't want it tight, we don't want it loose because as is the case when conditioning as you saw on the neck and I had said if the collar isn't snug on the dog's neck as is this case with the dog's belly, the dog is going to get the proper stimulation. Now what you may see when you put the belly collar on these dogs, especially early on, is what I call the, the rodeo effect. It looks like the, a horse at the rodeo. They're not accustomed to having the pressure on their belly. They're not accustomed to it being there. So the dog may jump around and act goofy. It's all part of the conditioning. It's all part of the process. This dog is very soft and easy going and she's not showing any effect to it. I could put it on a dog that's a little wilder and bounces around a little more and it might do jump around, hop around, flip around, land on its side. The dog isn't getting hurt. There's no pain involved with it. It's just uncomfortable for the dog having it on her belly. In this case, you can see by her tail set, her tail's down, she's unsure what's going on. Not having the collar on her belly before and having this process done, she's not exactly sure what this means. Now being she's been through the first series of 15 minute videos and she understands what the collar means on her neck, for here, for heel, this is a whole different end of the game. Now typically you don't train anything but the pointing dogs with the wool command. It's not typically, typically a command you're going to use with retrievers or spaniels because it doesn't really serve a purpose. With the pointing dogs, the wool command and having the collar on her belly is a stand stay. You'll see as we go on, as I administer pressure, the dog's body bumps away from the stimulation. In essence, making her stand up from, and keeps her from sitting down, but also kind of locks up the gears in the back end so she has to stop. What we do is we give the dog the pressure as we did on the neck but in this case, we want to give the dog the pressure until she stops. When she plants all four feet, then we release the pressure of the collar. Once again, I go down to the bottom of my collar, the lowest setting, and I'm on number one. We're going to start number one with continuous stimulation. We're going to let her walk around a little. She's smelling where there have been birds and other things out here. We're going to kind of make sure that she's kind of loose doing this. Now. When we condition the dog with the collar on the neck, we were happy if the dog had its, its mind and its what it wanted to do elsewhere. Its attention didn't need to be on us. When we're doing the wool command and starting it, the dog has to have her mind on us. We want her to acknowledge what we want. We give a little visual with the hand to show the dog that, hey, this is supposed to mean you're supposed to stop and stand. But notice she's smelling around checking things out. She isn't at this point ready to be you know, stimulated and put to work. Once we get her attention, it'll be a whole nother story. Here we go, we let her get her attention. Hey, now notice the wind is kind of blowing in front of her. She smells everything else going on. A young dog is very easy to get sidetracked. So don't be afraid if your dog's not paying attention to you at all when you're doing this. That's why we've got the check cord, the glorious check cord that we keep the dog from getting out of, you know, kind of our work zone here. Come here, girl, here. I get her attention, whoa, stimulator, whoa. She stops, notice I back away. She plants all four feet, the pressure's turned off, whoa. I release her, okay, good girl. She moves ahead, good dog. Notice I'm not calling her to me. I'm allowing the dog to be released because I don't want her to think every time she comes off of the wool command that she has to come back in to heal or come to me. Now her tail's wagging a little, all of a sudden her mind is starting to say, hey, I'm in the, a work mode here. Now I've got to start paying attention. Get her attention, whoa, stimulate, she stops. Acknowledges the collar there, 
but understands that once she plants all four feet, the pressure is off. Okay, that a girl, good girl. Now notice, even with the dog as soft as Bailey here, she's not cowering, she's not laying down, she's not doing things that some other dogs would do in this situation. She understands from going through the collar conditioning on her neck the first time around, that the stimulation is a means for her to, she turns off that pressure. Okay, now what happens is, is as the dog starts working and doing this, she's gonna get what I call sticky. She's gonna start stopping and standing there so she doesn't get the pressure knowing what I want. She's gonna try to get into my personal space here in that safety zone. Come on, that a girl. We get her attention, hey, whoa. Stimulate, she stops. Notice her back end hops up away. She plants all four feet. Once again, we want quality, but we want a lot of repetitions. She doesn't have to stand there all day. Okay, good girl. There you go. Notice she comes to me, she kind of bounds, she kind of hops. I'm not a bad person to be around. It's not me doing it to her. She's just starting to acknowledge that, hey, here's another command that I can turn this pressure off myself. Come on, Bales. That a girl. I get her looking at me, whoa, stimulate her. She jumps on me, I move away. Notice I'm always moving away from the dog. I was stimulating her as I gave her the command once she planted all four feet. As we saw in some of the other beginning trainer videos, the dog wants to jump on you, get in your personal space to eliminate the work. That's what she just tried doing there, jumping on me to say, hey, if I jump on you, I don't have to do this. Okay, good girl. Here she comes again. She figures if she stays around me and jumps on me, she eliminates the work. That a girl. Now notice how she kind of stops herself. I never gave her a command, so I'm not going to give her a command now. I want her to be in motion. Good girl. Whoa. Stimulate. She gets into me. Stimulate. Whoa. She gets into me. Whoa. Don't allow her to get to win the game. Whoa. Whoa. Now notice I'm doing nothing more than just defending myself and keeping her off of me. She wants in such a bad way to be in my pocket because she's, this is new to her. This is a means of pressure she hasn't been accustomed to. Now the first two or three we did, it looked like, hey, this is gonna be easy. She understands this concept. Now you begin to see the real truth with the dog. She wants to get in my personal space. She wants to get away from the pressure. And in her means, the more she jumps on me and gets onto me, the less I'm gonna make her do it. As you can see, I won the battle. It's in the process to win the war. Okay, good girl. Notice I'm not changing my demeanor any though. I'm not letting her think that anything bad happened. I'm not letting her think that anything has changed on our part. Whoa, stimulate, get away from her, whoa. I'm making sure that she doesn't get in my personal space. And if she does, I kind of defend her to keep her away. But what she does then is once she turns off the pressure and all four feet are planted, as time goes on. 15 minutes a day, this will go from what you're seeing here till the dog, you give her the command, you don't have to give her any stimulation, she'll automatically stand. This is the process how we start the collar conditioning for the wool command. Okay, good girl, that a dog. Now every so often, I can call her into me and not be relative here. Good girl, notice as she's trying to jump on me, I'm pushing her down and just petting her, let her think that this is okay, okay. I don't want her to think that it's me doing it, so I can kind of, you know, take her out of the game by just petting her every so often, but not, not letting her think it has anything to do with the pressure of the collar. The jumping thing, that is one of the biggest problems most people's dogs do. Early on, they encourage jumping. They let the dog jump on them, they pet them, praise them, love them up. Absolutely the worst thing you can do, because think from everybody else's standpoint. You don't always want people's dogs to jump on you, so by encouraging it, you're encouraging them to jump on everybody. These are the little things that I see as a trainer when I get dogs in for training, like Bailey, things that were encouraged early on that are bad habits that I have to break in order to move ahead. I'm, every time I'm correcting her and pushing her down and not allowing her to do it, I'm trying to work on that bad habit as well as doing other things. So think about everything you do with these dogs from when they're eight week old puppies throughout the rest of their life Everything means something, like this. She wants to jump, means of escape. She jumped a lot when I first got her in for training here, and that was a problem that the owner said, hey, we've got to eliminate the jumping. Well, the jumping was made as a six-month-old dog 
four months of her life she's been allowed to do it. Now we have to change it. So not only are we wool breaking here today, but we're also working on another problem that was set when she was young. The beauty of the wool breaking and the collar belly collars, it's a brand new thing for her. We're starting right now and from now on out is going to be the deciding factor what she allows, what she understands, and what we expect out of her. Same concept with the jumping and that's why I bring it up. If they would have nipped that in the bud when the dog was eight weeks old, it would have never become a problem that I had to deal with now. And an eight week old puppy jumping on you isn't the same as a six month old dog jumping on you. Good girl, okay, okay. Now notice the jumping is getting to be a little bit less even in this short time frame. But now here's I'm talking sticky. She doesn't want to get out of my personal space because she doesn't want the pressure. She stops and stands. I didn't give her a command. But she thinks that she can eliminate the pressure. I haven't given her any pressure in the last few minutes here. I have to make sure my timing is right. Atta girl. Okay. Okay, Bill. Come on. Okay. Good girl. Come on. Good dog. Get her moving around. Now this time hopefully I can get her away from me to correct her. Whoa. Stimulator, move away, open that space. Whoa. Okay. Good girl. Okay. Okay. Now here's where we get to the stickiness. She acts like she's been doing this for six months, but she's trying to figure out a way to eliminate the pressure. Does she really know what we want? No, but she's beginning to understand that by plant all four feet there is no pressure associated with it. Having that collar on the belly, we can only use it for wool breaking. Always keep that in mind. When the collar's on the belly, it's for wool breaking. When it's on the neck, early on, it's for all the other commands. Here, heel, sit, so on and so forth. Okay, that a girl. I get her moving, I move away. Whoa, stimulate, she stops and stands. Now notice the amount of times that I have to stimulate her is getting less and less all the time. I'm currently on a number two, which is the second lowest setting. If you watch the dog, you can see her back end bump up and she bumps away from the pressure. In essence, standing up and standing still. Okay. 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 Good girl. Good dog. Good. Notice she comes in this time she doesn't jump. Good girl. Okay. Not to say she won't in about five seconds. Whoa. Stimulator, she stops. Notice she wanted to come back into me and she was going to try to get to me to eliminate the pressure. I was able to give her a command and correct her. Sometimes we have to be opportunists. Every opportunity that we have, we have to capitalize on. In our 15 minute series, that's all about opportunities. Taking every opportunity you get to work through whatever you're working on with that part, at that particular time. In this case, the wool breaking, there's a few minutes where I wasn't doing anything because the timing wasn't right. You could see in this situation, I allowed the dog to get away from me. I was able, as she turned to come to me, to give her the pressure and give her the command. Okay, good girl. Good dog. a girl. Now if you watch this dog, you can see she's starting to get mentally out of sorts here again. She's starting to get where she's going to get clinging. She's going to start standing still, not wanting to do it. At that point, when you're training, you have to look and say, okay, she's got a few more left in her before we have to quit on a good note. Okay. Notice she doesn't even want to acknowledge me looking at me. She's got her back to me. She's looking the other way. In her mind, she's telling me, hey, I'm sick of this, I'm done. As the trainer, you have to make those decisions. You don't allow the dog to make these decisions. So we'll do a few more, end on a good note, and be done. Okay. That a girl, good dog. Now notice, notice I, I didn't want to correct her right away and give her the command as soon as she turned to, came, to come to me. I released her with okay. I don't want her to think every time she turns around and I release her, she's gonna have to stop again. So I want her to get in motion again. That a girl, Bailey. Come on. Good dog, move away. Whoa. Stimulate, she stops. Good girl. Okay. That a girl. Good dog. Notice I'm encouraging her, but I'm not going overboard. She's starting to get sticky. Come on, girl. That a girl. Good dog. Now I have to wait for my last opportunity to do it correctly. Whoa, there it was. Whoa. I had her intention, but I her attention, but I had it indirectly. She was noticing me. She was going to come into me. 
I was able to utilize that where she had that spacing between us. I stopped her. Okay, here. I pet her, she comes in, she leans up against me, isn't jumping. Perfect opportunity to end. I'm Tom Waite from gundogtrainer.com. Thanks for watching.